this is going to be a fun presentation. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. So. The juicing, the, the big thing we want to get across to you guys is that you can get a lot of nutrition in one, one glass of, uh, of a drink here, and you're going to see that as we go through and demonstrate. Uh, if you go through and drink a glass of this stuff, you know, you feel full. And I know from personal experience, it's like you first look at it, you're like, I'm going to need like some meat, like a steak or something mm -hmm. afterwards, but it really does. Uh, give you a lot of concentrated nutrition. That's one of the ways that our body can feel full if we're actually getting the proper nutrients as opposed to just throwing empty calories at, at our bodies. So um, this is kind of what we want to talk about here. Just a brief overview, why do we juice? Who can juice? When do we juice? What do we juice? And then how do we do it? And that's that's going to be the end, the, uh, the fun part. Uh, this is kind of just a, a brief sentence, very long sentence that I put together just to kind of outline some of the benefits of juicing. It's a very effective way to introduce large amounts of healthy nutrient-dense produce into an easily digested meal that can be easily stored and transported. We'll show you some of those things as, as we go on here. So that's the reason why a lot of people are getting into doing more juicing. Uh, juicing isn't necessarily a new thing, um, even though you probably heard about it more recently, but there's a, there was actually a medical doctor that was practicing for a, a number of years in the lives in the 50s and 60s and he was treating people uh, and one of the main ways he was working with them was just cleaning up their diets and the big thing he was doing was juicing with them and seeing things uh, like cancer start to go away and brain degeneration start to improve uh, autoimmune disease is going away so um, his name is escaping me right now uh, don't come to me, but anyways so juicing it has become a lot more popular in today's society because of just people doing it as, as more of a fad type of a diet, but it really is highly beneficial to the health. Dr. Gerson, that's who it was. Uh, <laughs> told you a company. Uh, so why do we juice? Well, we juice because it allows us to extract the nutrients and we lose the fiber, which makes it much more uh, easily absorbable and much more digestible. And like I said, in a very small uh, amount. You don't. If you ate all the, f uh, the vegetables and fruit that you put into a single glass of juice, you'd be full like a quarter of the way into it, as opposed to you can get all of that, that concentrated nutrition in without all the dense fiber to fill you up. Not to say the fiber is a bad thing, but sometimes it's good to give your body a little bit of a break. Um, new foods you can introduce. Uh, there's a lot of foods that I, I would never eat, like beets, and I've never had fennel before, but you take those things and you put them into a juice and you're like, wow, this is, this is really good, this is tasty. Uh, and then, you know, sometimes here and there you, you incorporate them into your meals as well, but they're really good to juice. Uh, and they give you some good juice properties. Uh, people do it as a detoxification. So you go through and you juice for a, a period of days. The video we were just watching here to start off, um, Joe, he juiced for 60 days. And I encourage you to watch the whole thing if you haven't seen it before. It's called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And uh, he pretty much corrects his autoimmune condition that he has uh, just through holistic care and juicing uh, and concentrated nutrition. So. Uh, you can do liquid meals um, with detoxification. So uh, one of the things I read here recently is doing your liquid meal in the, the afternoon or your evening meal and then also in the morning allows your body's detox mechanisms to really kick in and do what they're supposed to do. And then it's also good for gut repair and healing because it takes some stress off of your digestive system that you don't have to digest all that extra fiber. It can just pretty much take the stuff and just suck it right through and put it into circulation. Who can juice? Everyone. All the way from a nutritional novice or beginner um, to somebody who's been very experienced in the traditional field. Uh, it's obviously a, a very big part of these people's, uh, these, these people's lives as they continue to grow in their knowledge of nutrition. But you can start out as a beginner, uh, just make some simple juices, and we'll try and put together some of those things tonight so you can see and taste and, and understand, okay, this isn't as hard as it seems. These aren't, these aren't bad juices, you know, you think, oh, this is going to taste disgusting. They're, they're actually pretty tasty. You have to develop a little bit of palate for it. But, um, well, I was going to say that, that I find that the longer that we juice, that our tastes have changed. It used to be a lot of fruit and a little bit of vegetables, and <laughs> gradually have done more and more things like kale and beets, and, or not kale, but not beets, but kale and um, collard greens and things like that, and just enough fruit then to make it tasty. Yeah. So again, you'll get to, you'll get to experiment with some some samples here and see kind of what you like, get an idea, and, and that's really what we want to try and provide you with tonight. So uh, you can use this with, uh, like I said, detoxification, so toxic people, mildly toxic people, um, you know, like myself and my wife, we, we juice about once a week, um, you know, but for some people like Joe, who we saw in the video, he was severely toxic, he needed to juice every day for a number of days, and he feels amazing at the end. Severely ill people, and people think, 
Well, can kids juice? And definitely kids can juice. Um, you can start them off early in life and, and they do quite well with it. When to juice? Do you juice once a month? Do you do it once a week? Do you do it every day? Do you do it every meal? It really depends on what your goals are. You can do any of these things. I'd say if you're doing it like once a year, it's probably not worth buying a juicer. Uh, if you're doing it once a month, okay, yeah, you're, you're getting there. But really, um, I think doing it once a week is probably a good a good starting place for people as, as they get going, just to try and incorporate some of those nutrients into the, into their diet. Um, every meal, that's that's intense. That's not something that I would necessarily jump into you know, right away. But it is something, especially if you're looking for a, a, a detox for gut repair, like we were talking about in the previous slide, that definitely can be done. What to juice? And that's kind of what we'll get into more tonight. You can just see the list here. And it's basic stuff, easy stuff, you know, like apples, cucumbers, zucchini. Uh, we see different types of very mild celery. Stuff you would eat in a salad, pretty much, is all really good to start out at the very beginning. Carrots are big, um, the fennel or the anise, uh, and then the, uh, the celery. And this is anise. I never juiced it before. But we, uh, Tara bought some here a few weeks ago and juiced it. Actually, it has a really nice flavor to it. And it looks, as you can see, just like celery. I wouldn't have even recognized it in the store. So, anyways, uh, good stuff. Uh, as you move on, you might want to add a little bit more... Uh, diverse ingredients here, uh, things like lemon, lime, cilantro, parsley, ginger, maybe getting a little bit more into the beets, cabbage, ginger, uh, even cranberries can be a little bit more of a stronger flavor to add. And then more advanced, you really get into more of the deeper greens, uh, the kale, collards, and some people were saying dandelion and mustard greens. I, I've never tried them before, but they, they are out there and they're, some people do juice them. So. Will we get a printout of this PowerPoint, or should we just be taking notes? Uh, if you want, to, we're gonna re, we're gonna hit a lot of the the points again. But if there's something we need to go back and discuss, or uh, if there's something you really want to write down, I'll write down because we. If you want, I can print off some for you at the end for sure. But, okay. And like Dr. Hartman said, we plan to uh, videotape this, and then generally what we do is that we'll post this. We have a YouTube channel through our website where. You know, once we get this up on the website, you can go back and watch it over and over again from home if you'd like. Okay. So, yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah. Good, good question. Uh, another thing that you can juice, and this is something that, that we've really utilized a lot, is like if, say you, you're going through and you know you cut off the end of the celery, or you know you have all that, that broccoli stock at the end and you cut it off, and what do you do? You might throw it in there and cut it up and throw it in. Some people, that's not what they want to do, and they you know, throw it in the trash. Not an ideal thing to do. Cut it up, put it through the juicer, and you can extract a lot of juice from that. We do that with our, our cauliflower uh, leaves and things like that. Or like beet greens, you know, if you buy your beets and they're like this, and you don't want to you know, necessarily eat the greens, you can cut them off and then run them through the juicer, and you get a lot of good juice out of that. So we're going to juice all of it today, but as you see, ends, leaves, stems, those types of things are really good to run through the juicer. I, I want to mention that especially during the summer, if you have a large garden or... Um, uh, you have a small garden this time of year and it's really producing, or um, if you're a member of like a um, CSA, like the Community Supported Agriculture, and you, you go each week and get like a group of vegetables, one of the things we found that led to us juicing was we sometimes couldn't consume all the food before it would go bad. So it can be also a great way, um, when he mentioned leftovers, yeah. to, to, because you're distilling a big amount of food down into a small amount of juice, can be a great way to kind of use up vegetables or fruits that maybe would go bad otherwise or spoiled, and you'd have to throw away. So. Yeah, that was good. I kind of skipped over that. But, you know, sometimes you, like, cut up carrots to take to work with you or something like that, you know, to snack on, and they're like, man, these are starting to get a little, you know, funky. Uh, <laughs> you start running through the juicer that night instead of throwing them away. That's that's really a good thing. Or celery sticks, cucumbers. We've done it with lots of stuff. But, yeah, if, if you use so much for a recipe and you're like, well, I still have some left, what do I do with it? Put it through the juicer. Um, and another question people have, like, well, I have all this pulp that, I mean, this is still good pulp, isn't it? And, and yeah, it's definitely good pulp. What we usually do with ours is we, we run it over to the compost pile and let it, you know, kind of recycle back into the soil. But um, Tara started a Pinterest board for uh, Natural Health Family Chiropractic. So people who are into Pinterest, you can look this stuff up. And there's lots of uh, <laughs> recipes and things that you can do with it. You can make it into, like, fruit leather. Fruit leather. Um, this one is a, a guacamole. This is sushi made out of uh, the, the uh, remnants. Uh, this one's interesting. We're going to have to try it sometime. Carrot waffles. Um, I don't know. It might be good. Um, this one just has like 30 different recipes. You can add it to stock. You can add it to uh, soups. Uh, you can throw it into like meatballs. You can throw it in spaghetti sauce. I mean, anything you want to add a little bit of fiber to, you can take and throw it in there. 
the one thing I'll caution you, and that we'll probably talk about this more as we go on, is sometimes you don't necessarily want to put something with like lemon peel into a dish, uh, or you don't want to put like a ton of kale. So sometimes you want to separate it out or kind of have a plan to run stuff through, like, okay, I want to save this. Don't necessarily need to save this. Um, and just kind of keep that in mind if, if you're interested in doing that. Oh, and a lot of people do like dehydrated crackers with it, which again, I think is an interesting concept. But, uh, very interesting. Um, different types of juicers, and we have a few of them set up here, and you're going to see them all run through the as we go through the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, the, you don't necessarily want to run out and buy the the, the you know walk juicer. I mean, this thing is like two thousand dollars, and is a, you know an intense piece of machinery. Um, one of these more as they, this um, website laid it out, economical or, or centrifugal juicer, um, the masticating juicer, like the one we have over here. These are these are decent starter models, and most of these run like some of these cheaper ones. You get what you pay for. They might be fifty, sixty dollars, but they probably aren't going to extract the juice the best, and they're probably going to have problems as they go on. As you go on, as you move up here, they get a little bit more expensive. Most of them run two hundred to three hundred dollars to get a, a halfway decent one, but the return on investment I think is is wonderful. Uh, the functional juicers, you know, you like squeeze the lemon down on it, you know, that's not what we're talking about here. The centrifugal, centrifugal juicers are really good. The single gear juicers like we have up here, so there's just one single auger that, that spins through and you'll be able to see it as it works. There's twin auger where they're both going like this and just pretty much taking and grabbing the stuff and crushing it down in between two uh, blades or, or augers. Um, and that gets a lot, I don't say a lot more juice, it gets more juice so your, your pulp is almost like dry. Uh, and then there's a the hydraulic press juicers like that, the Narwhal up here, like I said, very expensive, probably not what you want to use uh, in your home. Um, and then how to juice, and this just kind of gives you some of the some of the basics of it. It says get some leafy greens, get a juicy base, um, so something like cucumber or celery that has a lot of juice to it that isn't necessarily horribly flavorful, but will give you lots of water content. Uh, and then put in something sweet, and you, know, you get a little bit of fruit in there. And then if you want to just kind of give it a little bit of extra zest, you can do the lemon, the ginger, or spirulina, garlic, those types of things. I've never juiced garlic before. I, I know. Yeah. I have. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to make my own, like, V8, you know. It didn't turn out so well. I, was, I only had to drink it because my wife did the, like, I told you that wasn't going to taste good. So I had to gulp it down. But uh, it wasn't so good. So. Yeah. Sometimes you have to experiment a little bit. And maybe, as you'll see, we'll, we'll kind of separate out some of the juices to let you try little isolated ones. Before you run like a whole bunch of garlic and let it go into your juice as you're making it, you right. might just let it go through, taste a little bit, mix it in with a little something. We did that the first time with ginger. Ginger is a pretty pleasant flavor. You know, you ran it through, got it, and it's like, okay, this, this tastes pretty good. So then we let it all mix through it, and it's a really nice background flavor in the juice. So. Yeah, that's a good point. I think um, it, uh, juicing, in my opinion, with a lot of those kinds of things like garlic, ginger, um, things that have a strong flavor, it almost intensifies the flavor, like if you've ever fermented foods or made like kimchi or um, sauerkraut or something like that. So um, it's not that you can't use onions and garlic and, and that kind of stuff, but it will intensify the flavor. So um, a lot of times when we juice, uh, if we're experimenting with something new, like Dr. Hartman said, instead of running it all into the same thing, we will change out the, the, the container it runs into, so then we can add it into a larger pitcher as we want to mess with the taste to, to not overpower the, the juice. So um, we even do that with our greens, uh, which we might do tonight to demonstrate. Um, we might juice all of our greens first and then um, then move that and then juice our fruits so that we can mix them together to, because maybe I'll drink almost pure greens, but my children won't drink that, so we have to mix more fruit in with theirs. So. Good point, very good point. So. Um, there's a lot of information. This this website is allisonsmith.com, um, and she had uh, some really good layouts of, of juicers and how to pick one. There's tons of information out there on the internet, so I encourage you, if you are interested in, in learning more about it after we get done with what we're doing here tonight, you know, there's plenty of information out there, and most of it's good. You know, you can't mess up juicing for the most part. You're getting vegetables and fruit, um, so it's really good stuff. So, anyways, that's the big thing we wanted to cover here. Um, just want to hit some of the basic concepts. And the other thing, I just was reminded with the Vitamix sitting over here. People have asked me a couple times leading up to this class, they're like, well, what's the difference between just blending and doing juicing? And as we kind of talked about before, juicing is really extracting out just the juice. As opposed to, like, if you took all these things and threw them in the blender, you're still going to have that whole fiber component to it. It's kind of already pre-digested because you've already spun it up and, the, and the, the blades in there have really chewed it up to that point, so you don't, it's still a, a lot easier than say if you're taking it all in and eating it 
uh, as a whole, but you're still going to feel full a lot, a lot faster. So um, there's nothing wrong with doing shakes or smoothies and you know putting it into the Vitamix or you know whatever type of blender that you have, but it's not juice. It, it is different. Um, and again, it's a really good thing to do, even when people are doing detoxes. I really encourage um, to do those types of smoothies and, and drinks like that. So, but yeah. Expand on that. So he, sure. he mentioned this in, in passing earlier, but one of the advantages of juicing is it's a very concentrated way to get those nutrients into your body without having to deal with the fiber. So it's almost like some of you might have heard of that there's a, there's a clinic in town where they will do actually nutritional IVs because it's a way to get the nutrients in your body that where it's it, you can bypass the digestive system, system altogether. In my mind, juicing is almost like that. You, you, take, you take in those concentrated nutrients that get absorbed very quickly. Um, so, so there's a big, big difference between blending and juicing. If you're blending your foods, it's, you're not gonna get that fast absorption. Your body's still gonna have to work to digest it, um, other than, like you said, the chewing. So, um, and then you mentioned about timing. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that it's because one of the benefits of juicing is to get those nutrients quickly absorbed into your body, the, it's the most optimal time to, to, to consume juice is when you haven't eaten for a while and then when you don't eat for a short period after you juice. Because if you eat a big meal and then you have like a homemade juice like for dessert or a half an hour later, your stomach is still full of that food you've eaten and it's still trying to digest. So. I mean, you could still do that. You'd still get some nutritional value of it, but but it wouldn't be nearly as good as if you consume the juice on an empty stomach or when you haven't eaten for a while because then your body can readily absorb that. Same thing, you wouldn't want to consume a juice and then eat a big meal afterwards if you want to get the maximum benefit from your juice. So we get started on something here. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll obviously keep talking more. We'll have discourse. We'll, we'll talk throughout the night. So feel free, like I said, if we ask questions, uh, it will make everything go go really cool and very nicely here. So feel right. free to yell because the juice is making noise. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, most of them. We'll be able to hear you because you can ask questions. <laughs> I mean, this is not one. As we start passing stuff through, I mean, obviously it'll get a little bit louder, but um, they're again pretty quiet even when you have them <laughs> in the kitchen. So, all right. Question. You said you feel full when right after you're having it, but how long will that fullness, like do you get hungry faster when you're juicing, do you think? I or? have noticed that, yes. You've noticed uh, that, yeah. So I, I, is it, is it I mean, more like a good idea to have like what, what I'm hearing you say is maybe like a fourth meal kind of thing where you don't eat a whole lot maybe at lunch and you have a juice in the middle of the afternoon and then you might eat dinner, kind of, that kind of thing, utilizing if you're going to try the once a week thing? Yeah, that could be. Or sometimes you use it as a dinner. I mean, I, I, I'm satiated enough that I can go to bed at night and not feel like, oh my goodness, I'm so okay. hungry. That's what I mean. um, but I mean, you definitely, like if you drink it at the beginning of the, uh, like if you start your morning with it or middle of the day, you, you will start feeling hungry a little bit sooner than say if you had had something that had a bunch of fiber in it or you had some protein or some, some fat, a little more fat content to it. So. But, but a lot of people could, could do it, like if you were going to do, even if you are going to do a once a day juice. My father-in-law, a little personal story, he um, several years ago had um, non-Hodgkin's non -Hodgkin, lymphoma. He went through normal um, conventional medical treatment, so he had you know, uh, chemotherapy and, and so forth, and he did well. But um, his, for, for months, his um, blood um, chemistry levels didn't go back to, to normal, and the doctor was concerned about it. And um, my um, father-in-law is a chemical engineer, and he's very scientific about stuff. And so my wife and I have been telling him for, for a long period of time, you know, you really ought to try juicing. And he, he uh, finally, as a last resort, did this. And he did one juice a day as like an adjunct to his normal meals, but he did it like in his case, he did it like in the evening, almost as like an evening snack when he hadn't eaten for a while. And after he did that for, just happened to be about a three week period, his um, uh, blood levels went to normal. And that was the only thing that had changed. Um, so it can, it can really be dramatic. There was also a study too, um, just recently that I read, where they took athletes and they um, had them for six weeks consume I think it was actually a green smoothie, not a green juice, but then they measured their um, their athletic ability and so forth, and they found an improvement compared to a control group of athletes that were doing the same kind of exercise just by um, adding that extra nutrition to them. So. If you store it for a day or two, does it lose any um, 
nutritional value? Yeah, that's a good point. It's best to consume it immediately is best. We're going to talk about um, how to help to preserve it in some different ways, I think. Or our yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll but, talk about that as we go on. Um, but it's best to consume it right away. The, the flavor will be better. Um, and also part of the um, advantage of, of juicing is that you get, because the, the everything is raw, um, you get all the um, the en enzymes that are found in the um, fruits and vegetables, and those um, degrade quickly. Um, so and depends a little bit on the kind of juicer you use, like um, the um, masticating juicer yeah. or the one on the left introduces less oxygen in into it. So you, you heard, heard about things oxidizing, which is, <coughs> you know, going bad. And the simplistic thing is if you store something in the refrigerator, if you vacuum pack it or you you know, push all the air out of the Ziploc bag, it lasts longer. Same kind of thing with, with juicing. So like this juicer that's mine, it spins, and so it does get a little bit of oxygen introduced into it, so it will not last as long. So um, we'll talk about that in a second, but it, the sooner you can consume it, the better, ideally. I would say one of the, the negatives about a machine like this, even though it breaks, it, the way it masticates the food is it doesn't introduce as much, much oxygen, it doesn't rip it apart, it's more of just like crunching the juice out of it and, and pressing it up against mm -hmm. the screen, but it, it does take a little bit longer uh, mm -hmm. to feed everything through and you'll see that. So what mm -hmm. I think we'll do, I'll actually have Tara start forcing through this one and then figure we just do like one of our, our basics for these and then if you want to put our basic, basic juice in, then you can start doing whatever you want in yours too. Because so, okay. again, ours is going to take a little bit longer to, to juice than the, than the bruggle here in the middle does. So. Okay? So while, while Tara's doing that, I'm going to prepare some greens, and I'll juice some greens through mine first. And if somebody's really brave and they want to try just some just greens to see what it tastes like without any fruit, we can pass it out and I'll mix some fruit in, okay? <laughs> Feel free if you guys want to, if you're not seeing something or you want to stand up or something like that. Unfortunately, it might get a little boring here for people, but we'll kind of talk about stuff as we keep on working. So. Do a little dance while I do it. I was going to say, you're <laughs> So you can see, you just take... Let's some interpretive juicing dancing for us. So you can see, Tara's just taking and mashing this, mashing this in here. This one's kind of nice because it actually has a, a pressure setting on it, and you can set the pressure to a little bit higher for something like kale or... Uh, you know, some, some kind of leafy green, and it'll it'll push it through with a little bit more force, as opposed to something like an apple. It doesn't need as much because it's mostly liquid, and so it will go in and just pretty much turn to juice almost immediately, and then it will, <clears throat> and so you don't necessarily need as much pressure behind it. You can see the juice coming out down in here, and then as it goes, obviously there's a lot more juice in apples, but there's not quite as much pulp. So the pulp is finally starting to come out through here. But thankfully, we're getting a lot of juice as we're juicing these apples. So, and the good thing is apples are sweet, and so they help to give a nice flavor to the juice. Another thing, Tara's throwing in some some cucumber here, and again, we're getting some some good amounts of juice from it. Not as much pulp. I know, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Getting a lot of juice from this one. <laughs> <laughs> this that I'm feeding in is um, rainbow chard or Swiss chard. It's um, this is actually out of my garden. Same thing with the kale. And as far as greens go, I'm starting with the Swiss chard in case somebody wants to try it. It's a little bit sweet compared to other greens. So. You want to try it? Well, I'll do a little bit more. And there's no like fancy way you just kind of push it in there. And, and you can see how fast this goes. It just kind of takes, sucks it in. You just give it a little bit of pressure. I'll try and show it to you on this one. What this one has, and this is very similar to the one Dr. Lindholm is using, is it has the spinning blade here. And what it does is as, as the juice goes down in, it just has all these little teeth that come up and grab it, and it just starts to just 
almost like you're putting it through a grater, but it just starts to take the, the whole mass of it and turn it into liquid. So this is where some of the oxygenation comes in because it's spinning so fast and because it's just kind of tearing it apart. Um, but then it throws it up against the screen here and it throws the full fountain in the back and then it takes the juice and it just sinks down in and then it comes out the nozzle and you got a, a very nice juice. talking about how you get a concentrated source of nutrients. This was full, it's a two gallon bag, and you can see how much juice I'm producing. So I'm a pretty big eater, but I couldn't eat that much Swiss chard. It would be a huge salad. You could drink that pretty easy. So I'm going to add other things to this, but does anybody want to try some? Just sure. To... normally drink this straight. I'm just giving it to you so you can get an idea of what just the greens taste like. Okay. So, so I'm going to mix it in with fruit later, but I'm just giving you like a tiny little bit so you can see what it tastes like. Well, yeah. It's really earthy. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's the first time I ever did meat. I washed it. I said, dirt in it. I said the exact same thing. I was like, mm, this is... This is, Ooh. anybody else? Yeah. Not dirty, but yeah. definitely earthy. Yeah. Sorry, I missed the... Oh, sorry. Well, don't worry, we'll get them back to you guys. Okay. I started nice and fine, so I started with apples. Yeah. yeah. And believe it or not, this is... I'm going to do kale next, and it has a earthier cabbage <laughs> flavor, so... I like, that's a nice term. It's very earthy. Anybody else? I'll tell you that when we first started juicing, we discovered that lemons will pretty much cut through any lemons difficult flavor. So we put lemons into every juice because if we want to get really power packed nutrients like kale and beets and things like that, I can't do it without having some lemon in there. But the lemon really cuts through any kind of bitterness that any of those would have. So, And at first, when I would juice them, I would take the rind off because the rind is a little bitter on its own. Um, but now, now we just juice everything. But you start out by taking the rind off because it's a little bit sweeter that way. Can we get, can we get everybody with the greens juice? Good stuff, isn't it? Oh, So I said, you usually don't just drink. That's what I was thinking. Yes, and more just because, at least I, this was our old juicer and they can just kind of go everywhere. Um, they don't. I think they would probably just go right through if I left them in there, but we're just in the habit of they taking do. them out. Okay. The, yeah, they, I've never seen them. Yeah. Never seen them up before? Just, I've never seeded our apples. Well, seeded. Oh, I got you. Yeah. And I was surprised to see it in. Yeah, you don't need to, but when we were juicing with that one, they would like fly like little bullets everywhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> and some, some of the machines will say on them if you put, because they say take the seeds out. If you don't, then it voids your warranty. But I've never, it's not done anything to our machine up to this point, so I'm not too concerned about it. I was going to do kale. Okay. Do you need some for yours? Because I've got a whole bunch. I'm just kind of putting This, what Tara's making is like what we juice on a regular basis. It's just kind of a hodgepodge of, of stuff. Uh, you see, we put some carrots, some celery, we put some greens in, we'll put more greens in, apples, lemons. Sometimes we'll throw some beets in, ginger, carrots, zucchini, some kind of squash, something to give a little bit more body. So, And just um, to give you an idea, when we juice, we fill this pitcher up, and between the two of us, that's what we'll have. I mean, so we're drinking a lot of juice for a meal, about yeah. four cups each. But when we fill all that up, a lot of times we don't actually end up juicing it, or uh, drinking all of it. And so um, that's where something like this comes in handy. And it's just a vacuum seal container. Put it over, and then, you know, I didn't pump it enough, but 
But what it does is it has a seal, and then when you're ready to drink it, you just pop it open. And it's for about a day. We've done it two days before, but that's all the further we've ever done. They, they recommend you drink it within 24 hours, even if you're in the store, like this in the fridge. And like Dr. Minow said, it tastes best when you just made it. Uh, and that's when it's most nutrient dense, too. So that's why I recommend drinking it right after you make it. My wife often will juice once in the morning, and then she'll freeze half of it in a container like that one that has the blue lid, and then take it out of the freezer. She'll actually like bring it with her, so I might be spraying it here. <laughs> she'll, she'll take it out of the freezer and then let it thaw when she's, when she's here, so that by the time she wants to continue a few hours later, it's thawed. Yeah, glasses not work. You can freeze it too. So you might notice as I'm juicing this kale that it produces a lot less juice. So again, it's even more, if you were to try to eat this, you'd have to eat even more compared to like the Swiss chard. As far as greens go, it has a little bit more juicing. This also is out of my garden, so it's fresh. And that's, you might want to talk to fresh and local. Okay. Uh, the that is a good point. And, and you actually have the on your sheet here, the yellow sheet, or the goldenrod, I don't know what color this is, but um, this is uh, who we get organic food from in the area here. I mean, we'll get some of it from the store, but they actually provided this, this to us because we were doing the juicing seminar tonight. But I mean, uh, you get a really good price on it you actually pick it up at a location. So it's all like, it's very easy. It, as long as you kind of live somewhere in that general vicinity to come pick it up. You don't have to like go to the store and be like, I'm pick it out. But one of the nice things that they, they do is they talk a little bit about organic versus not organic on some of their, their literature. And eating organic, you know, it, it's, a lot of people think it's like, oh, it's just a bad thing. It's, it's not really that important. I mean, you know, you can buy conventional, you can buy organic. They're both good, right? They are both good. I mean, if you're eating conventional fruits and vegetables, you're still doing better than most of America. Uh, but you can take it to that next step, that next level, by yeah. growing your own. Or you can buy the organic, or uh, like Dr. Lindholm mentioned, you know, uh, belonging to a CSA or something like that, where it's all local. It's not brought in. It's, it's freshly picked. It's still uh, nutrient rich, because that, that plays an, an effect on it as well. Um, not only when you're juicing it, but how recently was it picked. So the further away it's been picked, or like the longer it's been able to just like sit and ripen on a shelf as opposed to on the actual plant, uh, the more nutrients that it loses or that it doesn't gain. So hopefully that made sense if I just said. Um, is that year round? I it is year round. Yeah. B&B is rough year round, yeah. Kale so it's really easy to grow too. Yeah. And uh, it's right. amazing how few plants you need to produce juice. and. She even snuck a few in our flower garden. Yeah. And that looks pretty good too. Yeah. yeah. Well, same thing. That's part of the reason I grow the, uh, the, um, the rainbow chart because it's it looks good. I actually have, my garden is actually like in my landscaping. So, yeah. <laughs> so I normally would not, I'm going to mix this together like I normally do for later. But if anybody wants to try just the kale juice, I have some here. Okay. Yeah. And the, the other thing is, is as you're drinking this, this is not diluted with any other like watery substance. This is all like very concentrated kale. You know, it, it, yeah. Anybody else for yes. yep. good. Yes, yes, no, oh, yeah. Why you can not, notice right? the color too. This is really oh, bright green compared to the Swiss chard. It's kind of a brownish color. Some in the fridge. Is that even more earthy? <laughs> How would you describe that? How would you describe that one? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just mixed it in, Karen. I didn't realize. You drank. That's okay. So just you, you can kind of see. I mean, that's all that kale. I mean, it's not a lot of juice when when all is said and done. But when you put it into something bigger, I mean, you imagine all that nutrition plus you know everything else that you're putting in there, and it, it really does make up. A big impact. So. All right. Got some samples of this too. If anybody wants to try it, it's got carrots no. and celery and beets no. and apples and lemons. 
and cucumber and zucchini. And when I sample that, what I'm going to do next is juice a bunch of other stuff Try and this then one. mix it together okay. and give you an idea of a sample of what like, the finished you. product would be like after you tasted some of the just raw greens, okay? Mm. So, so you can see how the flavor will change once you add the other vegetables and fruits. Yes. <laughs> from fresh fruits and vegetables is that we can actually do an assay where you can say this is how much vitamin C it contains, this is how much magnesium it contains. But the other miraculous thing is just, in my opinion, the way the way God designed everything is that is that many of these, oh, it's not done yet, but that's all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The way, the way um, is that there's, we're still discovering nutrients that are in foods that, um, that aren't vitamins or minerals, but that are extremely beneficial. Like there's a there's a chemical called resveratrol, for example, that's found in brightly colored um, um, fruits, things like grapes, and it's one of the thing one of the reasons why red wine is healthy for you, so and so forth. That they they're finding is enormously valuable for tissue repair and for longevity and so forth. So so the, so the reason I uh, mention that is that. Um, you're probably getting good things you're not even aware of when you're juicing um, fruits and vegetables. So. But yeah, lemons are a good source of vitamin C and, and in addition to other things too. Do you think it makes a difference in the apples? Because I've seen and like that Pat Sick and Nearly Dead, didn't he say green apples? And another one we watched said green apples. Is that for a reason? Um, well, it's interesting when we did the shopping list for tonight that um, Dr. Hartman and Tara said they usually use sweet apples and we usually use green apples. Honestly, it's just what I started doing, the same kind of thing. I think that I saw someplace that mm -hmm. green apples were good. Yeah. But I don't honestly know what the difference is. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know? I think there's a little more sugar content to the red apples okay. that makes them, okay. makes them flavor the juice a little bit better, especially yeah. if you're making something really green already. But I mean, if that's what you're going for, mm -hmm. it's like a really green juice, it, I think the green apples would be more, more mm -hmm. ideal for, for that. And generally, um, people start with adding more fruit and then <clears throat> switch. To, I mean, you could keep doing fruit, but um, but the health benefits are greatest with the vegetables, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, I would say that um, at the longer you juice, or to try to train yourself to add fewer amounts of sugary fruits and more vegetables, and so that might be the reason. Mm -hmm. Like I said, maybe there's less sugar in the like, green apples. So I'm gonna keep juicing so I can get it. Finished product. Did you have ginger in there? Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Isn't that good? Yeah. It doesn't take much ginger to oh, yeah. give it a little <laughs> bit. I mean, it's, it's like maybe a pinch of it. Yeah. Thank you, The, the green romaine that Dr. Lindholm's doing here, that's picking out a, a, a little bit more juice than like what you're getting from the kale or from the, the, uh, the rainbow chard, or like what you get from collards, um, which is good. And, and romaine's still a good type of lettuce. That's one thing we didn't really talk about is you don't necessarily want to like juice iceberg. I mean, you're going to get what you're, what you're putting in there. You know? So the more quality types of, of food that you use, the better quality your juice is going to be. And that's again why if you're doing organic types of fruits and vegetables, then again, I think you're gonna have a better quality of juice, more nutrient dense, and I think the flavor is even enhanced. 
Have you guys ever used Brussels sprouts in yours? Can't say we have. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it would be okay though. I wonder, I don't know. We have done cabbage. Yeah. yeah. How did it work with everything? It works good. Cabbage is a very, I, I feel like a very mild flavor when it's raw and when you juice it. Um, with all these, and that brings up a different point, there's different tolerances of these things. You might not want to jump in and do like a whole head of cabbage for your first time. Um, you might not want to do like four beets. Uh, let's just put it this way, it'll turn different aspects of your excretions red. So, it's not blood, people. It's not blood. <laughs> you do not have a GI bleed. Uh, after eating beets. You're not dying like I thought I was. <laughs> so, oh, no. just, just little things to be aware. I mean, stuff like apples, cucumber. I mean, this is stuff that is safe. You eat it all the time. Um, again, you don't want to do like a whole bulb of garlic the first time out. You might not want to do any garlic. Don't do any you, garlic. You don't want to do the whole root of a ginger. You know, it, it's you just got to be very. Uh, you, know, you might mess up a couple times. It, it's a learning experience as you're going through. Ooh, it. Yeah, there's a whole um, other bag. Yeah, there's a few collard things. But yeah, it, it kind of detolerates. Don't jump in and, like I said, do it all at once. Start with stuff you know, start with uh, stuff that you like, and then kind of add more to it as you continue on. If you had to guess for a meal for the two of you, how many heads of romaine would you need? How many heads of, if you went to a store to buy them? Okay. That paper, that I, the pink one that yep. I passed out, that gives you an idea of what we typically juice when we do for a meal. Um, there are a lot of varieties to that, so this is really the basic of what we juice and how many of each item we juice. Um, and then usually, like he said, we're, we'll add like cabbage or something like that, but in order to get a decent amount of juice, that's usually the base for what we do for a meal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. for two people? Yeah, for two people. It's funny, I, had, I took some pictures in preparation for this and I forgot to put them on the, the PowerPoint show. But, I mean, it's, it's like we have our sink here and we have this little, like, accessory counter that we can, like, wheel around the kitchen. And so that's what our juicer sits on. So it sits right up next to the, uh, right up next to the sink. So we're washing stuff. You just set it down, cut it on the cutting board and just, you know, start running it through. And so it's like this whole huge pile of clean vegetables sitting next to the juicer just getting ready to uh, go through it. It is pretty impressive like how much stuff goes into uh, that pitcher of, of juice in the vitamin. So you do four cups of the city each? Roughly, yeah. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, it depends. And sometimes it won't be the only thing we eat, sometimes we'll eat other other stuff with it. I mean, it, it's not like you can't eat something with it, but, um, but it's definitely a... You know, and if you eat something else, you don't need to drink as much juice. So. This thing has a, a burning, not burning, but some kind of a sensation that you swallow. Is that the ginger? Did you mm -hmm. put cilantro it's in there? Ginger. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably the ginger that. Cilantro kind of, and parsley will kind of do that same thing. I think it's probably the beet too. The beet, yeah. So yeah, and it kind of gives you that little like, <laughs> almost like a, I mean, it's almost like you would get from like a ginger ale hitting the back of your throat. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. it's not bad. It's just yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that was a ginger. You see, Doctor Linholm, he has a pitcher and he just stirs it, and that works perfectly fine. You don't have to throw in the Vitamix. Although we like to throw in the Vitamix because then we can spin it up with some ice. Cools the temperature down a little bit, um, so and I, I think it tastes a little bit better that way. But you can do whatever you want when it comes to that. You can even just put whole ice cubes in and stir it up, and it'll it'll accomplish the same effect. So. And we like to do that because I don't know if you were watching when I was doing it, but I I juiced a bunch of um, it, this contains um, so Swiss chard, kale, um, cucumber. Um, Zucchini. Zucchini, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Green item. laughs> romaine, or, uh, romaine lettuce, um, some carrots, um, and then lemons and apples. So what I was doing was what I commonly do at home. I juice the greens first, and then I juice enough fruit, and then I kind of sample it. And then I say, well, that's sweet enough, or I need to add a little more. So I added some more apples, carrots and apples. We didn't buy any tonight, but um, we also mm -hmm. commonly use pineapple at home. Pineapple has a really strong sweet flavor that can, will cover up the earthiness that mm -hmm. talking about. So, so this one I'll, I'll pour out samples. This is more like what commonly we would drink at home and, and that I would even be able to get my 
teenagers and my uh, nine-year-old to drink. So. And then in a minute I brought watermelon. I'm going to um, juice some watermelon just straight. You can also add that like you would add apples or pineapple or whatever to sweeten your juice. But um, watermelon has an enormous amount of uh, B vitamins, especially in the rind. You know, normally you throw the rind away and you just eat the red part or, the, or if it's the yellow, watermelon, the yellow part. Um, but the rind actually has, I forget now, like five or ten times the amount of B vitamins that the, uh, that the red part of the, um, the watermelon does. So wow. I tried just straight rind and it's an acquired taste. So I would mix <laughs> some, of the, some of the red in with the Does everybody want to try this? I'll just keep going. Oh, sure. Doing all right. Hanging in there. So this does not contain any beets or um, parsley or um, celery. And there's no celery. And I actually like almost everything, but I'm not a big fan of celery, so I usually admit celery from our celery is a really healthy thing to add, but I just personally don't like the taste of it. Don't like the taste of the juice or just celery? Either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, it's like one of the only foods that I don't like. I just, I just don't like celery. Oh. because it, uh, it really varies a lot. When I, uh, it, honestly, I usually juice until this is full and the foam is coming out. So, and then that would for me normally be, if I'm using it to replace a meal, which I don't do often, then I would probably consume all of it. And it's a, it's a I would, well, it's probably sitting on here. Um, that would be like about 40 ounces. That's a lot. Okay. Um, my wife would do that same amount and then she would usually consume half of it. And then, like I said, a lot of times she would freeze half of it and then consume it later in the day or the next day. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. You. Yes. Um, if I were to do it just as an adjunct, like I just wanted a boost or whatever, then I might do half that amount. So. Thank you. Thank you for taking that. Sure. You're getting full. Yeah. And that's one thing to keep an eye on. And like this one, it's really easy because it's all right there. I just but if your shoot starts way. getting uh, your... Uh, the shoot starts getting full of stuff, it'll start kicking it back in and it'll get into the juice more. And you get a little thicker juice. And it's not a bad thing. You'll get, you'll get a little bit of the pulp in there. Um, I've actually heard people say they like to take a little bit of the pulp and just throw it in for a little added fiber. If that, if you're not trying to avoid it, then it's absolutely fine to do that. Um, just to again, give you a little bit different uh, texture to the juice. But a lot of the juicers are actually rated on how much pulp do they put into the juice. And the more pulp, the lower the rating of the juicer. So the idea is that you get a very dry pulp, and you get a very 
clear, clean, pulp-free juice. That's a good quality juicer um, when you are like reading through reviews. So just something to keep in mind. This juice is one that does not have as much fruit in it, so it's a little bit more tart. Um, has <coughs> kale and parsley and zucchini and cucumber. And there's a little bit of apple and lemon, but not as much as the first one. If anyone wants to try that. Greener juice, greener juice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. There might be a little bit of celery left because there was a little bit of it the first. We got the pass the thing. Okay. That was good. That one was not one. Um, I don't know if that Hartman mentioned sorry, but mine you'll hear like a difference in noise. So that's a one, and it goes from a one all the way up to a five. And this one actually has a little read on it that says, for example, one is for soft fruit. And that goes up the chain like citrus, pineapple, apple, and then hard vegetables. And so it controls the rate at which it spins. So you get it, the juices more effectively if you use the right speed. But it also introduces less air. So you really only need it going really fast for something hard like watermelon rind or kale or something like that. So. research and like I said it's really high in B vitamins and some of you might know this already that one of the things that happens is when we're under stress our body utilizes more B vitamins or needs more B vitamins and especially unfortunately some people are are, are plagued by problems like um, um, chronic stress adrenal fatigue kinds of problems and they can really benefit from Sometimes, often, we will recommend actually a supplement regimen of taking B vitamins, but this is a great natural way to get to up your B vitamins, so it can be really good for that. B vitamins are just really important for lots of health things. They're important for circulation. Um, so if you have heart disease, um, even things, honestly, like that you would take Viagra for, um, B vitamins can be really good for. So um, they're really good for lots of things. Do we have more B vitamins? He did. Dr. Hartman, you mentioned your uh, piece that takes out the oxygen. Yeah. And was that bought separately or did it come in a yeah, kit? Yeah, it was separate. Separate. So you can go buy those. Yeah, you can find it. And, and that's just a, a pretty cheap one. Um, it was actually made by a woman who, or designed by a woman who did juicing for, like, I, I believe if I read her bio correctly, she, like, reversed her chronic illness that she was dealing with and she worked, so she wanted to find a way to store it so she could drink it regularly and she came up with with this type of design and there's different sizes like my in-laws have one about like this and like that that has enough juice for a day um, but I mean if you go on Amazon and do like vacuum seal containers there's all types of different things that'll do it you know electric ones um, that you can do like to Tupperware size containers or like uh, mason jar size so, I mean there's all types of options that you can do with that to try and vacuum seal and, and preserve stuff so. Does Walmart sure. have something like that? They I might. It wouldn't surprise me. Look at what I'm looking at. 
Yeah. Oh. Bed Bath and also has some yeah, I think that's there. That's where we got ours. Is they Bath carry that line. So it's just like this, and then there's like a, a seal on the inside. Yeah. And then. <laughs> Actually, I'm interested in the other one too because oh, yeah. I juice at night, and I'd like one in the morning, but it makes too much noise oh, for my household. Yeah. 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 That's yeah what these I was these too. are great. These are great for just about anything. Oh, like we just finished up a, a detox last week. You just take the powder, dump it in there, put some water in, shake it up. It's got the, it's got the little uh, shaker ball in there. And they come in different sizes, too. Uh, there's one that's about half this size. Is that also, also a Bed Bath & Beyond? Yeah. You can probably get it there, but you can also get them pretty cheaply, like on mm -hmm. Amazon, too. Mm -hmm. I love Amazon because I send it right to your house. <laughs> <laughs> not plugging Amazon here or anything, but... Um, you know, you got an Amazon t-shirt on, anyway. I know, right? <laughs> but the blender, uh, the blender bottles are really nice. And th there's lots of different options and varieties like this out here. But I mean, uh, I don't know, it's just functional. It's what I've used ever since I was in chiropractic school, so um, it's a nice it's a nice little deal. So, and like I said, that vacuum seal container has really helped mm -hmm. us out with being able to preserve them overnight and not have to, you know, like hard freeze them. Because um, another thing, and I think this is what, what Lisa does, is like, it's almost like a soft freeze, like they're only in there for a little bit, so they kind of crust around the edges, and then they then you move them to the fridge, and they're, they're pretty stable then at that point. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a whole science. To, yeah. <laughs> How long do you leave it in the freezer? Yeah. How many more do you need? I would like to part. Yeah, I want to try some too. <laughs> that rind tastes better than anything. <laughs> well, and that was basically a quarter of a small watermelon. So it had the red in there too, but it was the the it was a mixture of all the rind and all the the meat from a quarter of the water. Now, that's good stuff. What's that? It's okay. All right. um, it's awesome. I should mention that also, I don't do this, but my wife has been known to prepare a juice and then say that it doesn't taste sweet enough, and then instead of adding more fruit to it, add a little bit of stevia to it. To sweeten it, so that's an option too. Um, uh, does everybody know what stevia is? So it's a natural um, herbal sweetener that's non-caloric. So if you're juicing partially to cut down on the calories, you don't want to add more um, uh, more fruit that has more sugar in it. Or say you want to try to move more toward more greens, but you can't handle the, the flavor. You could add some stevia to it to sweeten it. I've also this kind of defeats a little bit the purpose of it being something that's readily absorbed, but I've also added um, whey protein powder to it. So like I've used a juice like post-workout, done like a weightlifting workout, and then wanted a really healthy thing to consume right afterwards, and I wanted the, the sugar and the enzymes and the nutrients from the juice, but I wanted some protein also where I put a scoop of a stevia sweetened whey protein powder in it also to make like a homemade um, um, muscle milk or something like that. So. I think it's, Dr. Herman said it's about 7 o'clock, so we could entertain a few questions, but then, um, but then <coughs> if, if people have to leave, that would be, um, that'd be okay if anybody has to get out of here. You're so. not going to offend us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the first part, but the stuff that I've read, that if you don't drink it within 45 minutes, it starts to lose some of its value. Yep, that's what we just, we mentioned that, that, uh, that the sooner you can cons consume it, the better. So we were talking about some options for if you can't consume it right away, or just, as you can see, this is a little bit of work to do, so it can be an advantage if you want to juice more than once a day to sometimes make a bigger bunch and consume it over, you know, throughout the day, but it is best to consume it right away. Yeah. And then there's, there's optimal, and then there's slightly less than optimal. Right. I mean... You know, if you, if you let it sit for three hours, is that you know, maybe it loses five percent of its nutrient value? I don't, I don't know. I don't know the numbers, but uh, I can't imagine that it loses like ninety percent of it and it's pretty much worthless to drink at that point. Um, I mean, the, the way I understand it is, is it does stay pretty stable for a period of time, but it's just the best fairly soon after. And then, like I said, depending on the type of juicer. Um, that you use, it, it will affect how how long the juice will last. Because um, we definitely, when we switch from using the centrifugal Jack the Lane juicer to doing the single auger juicer, that the juice taste actually change. Like within 25, 30 minutes, you can start to almost taste the oxidation setting in, especially as the juice starts to get warmer. Um, 
But if with that one, I haven't noticed it nearly as much. So, but again, um, it's still gonna be better than that. yeah, exactly. It's still gonna be much better than than not juicing at all, for sure. Um, Did it take you quite a bit longer when you went from the Jack Lane to the the press? Does it take you longer to do your juice? Yeah. Like by how much? Double, twice the time? Eight, ten minutes. More? Yeah. We, we, we can usually get through all that. This took about 12 to 15 minutes. This takes probably about 20 to 25 minutes to run enough through for both of us to drink. Like I said, to fill the Vitamix container there. So That one, you can put whole things in, whole apples. Yeah, and then some More of them have, have even bigger shoots than this. Um, that they, they advertise it like, can fit a whole apple. And, and so that's one of the selling points on it. Um, Obviously, to cut stuff up isn't necessarily a huge deal, but I mean, the, you know, rather than cut your cucumbers as you can, be able to just drop them in and press them down. Yeah, that's nice. But again, the, the faster you're feeding it through, the more uh, oxygen exposure, the, the more you're heating it, um, that, those types of things. So again, just things to consider is you know, time versus nutrient. And, and again, there's, there's not a huge balance of tipping uh, with that. You're still going to get a lot of good nutrients from, from these centrifuge type of juicer. So. My uh, sister-in-law has a juicer that spins like this, but instead of the um, the uh, having a screen, can I open this one? Mm -hmm. you, this yeah. one has a screen. Right? Yeah. So instead of having a screen like this that separates the uh, your spools out, right? um, that separates it, it actually throws the pulp against the side, and then the juice is pushed through the pulp. It's just a different system. So the disadvantage of that one, though, is that um, unlike this one where Dr. Hartman emptied this before when it got full of pulp, you can only juice so much and then you have to empty the pulp out because there's no room to put stuff in, into it anymore. So um, that's not a, a factor with these. Um, one practical thing, if, if you've been juicing already, you might know this, but the, the cleanup is, is, a, is um, best done immediately <laughs> because the longer you let this sit, the more it starts to stick to it. So it can be a simple pro process of just you know, washing it really quickly in the sink or parts of it you can throw in the dishwasher. Um, but if you, by, I can tell you by experience, if you decide, well, I'm really busy now, I'm going to do that later, and you let it sit, then it's twice as much work later on. And um, this part, um, which is the hardest to clean, Oh, it's your screw up. Okay, yours is a different one. But anyway, this is probably the most time intensive to clean because you, you have to get the pulp out of these. Um, that there. is a pain to clean. So what, I don't know how you guys do, but what we do is we actually use the same uh, a, the same brush we use to scrub the outside of the vegetables. Um, we use um, with um, with you know um, just the same detergent we use to wash dishes to to wash that also because the bristles work really better than actually the little brush that came with it. For, for it, so. I put a plastic bag in that chute too, so then yes. you just lift it up and that's at least that's clean. Yeah, you can, <laughs> and you can use just a Martin's bag. Yeah, I do yeah. the same thing usually yeah. at home. Yep. Let's say that this one, the way it breaks apart, you can actually take the whole, this whole end off here like this, which I think is kind of nice, and you just run it right over to the sink like uh, that, so it's all kind of one piece. But then uh, it breaks apart into few different things here. I'll actually show you the auger real quick so you can see it. How much was this one that you're looking at right here? This one is... It's about three, mm, 350. So this one has, the, you can see the little screen that it pushes through here, and this one actually cleans off really easily. But then, the so this is what's taken and, and jamming all the, the juice up against the sides and then down into the chute. And so you can see it's just like something that should be like drilling into the earth here, but uh, <laughs> just kind of helps to like say, that pressure to type of, uh, type break it and then pushes it through that little screen. So again, you can see it's a little bit less invasive on the mm -hmm. fruit and the vegetable, but uh, still very effective. <laughs> but yeah, like Dr. Lindholm said, the faster you clean it, the better off you're going to be. And it, and it really doesn't take that long. Like if you rinse this stuff immediately, it takes like two or three minutes to just, you know, wash it through. Five minutes, water. tops. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah. If you want so to be really thorough. So when you go thorough. to replace your juicer, what, will you, will you go back to a press or will you go back to the centrifugal? I think we'll probably stay with the single auger style, I would I would say. We've been really happy with it. And the other thing is that the yield is, is uh, a little bit higher in it as well. 
I'm not much higher. I mean, if, if you would compare, and I, I've watched, if you go to YouTube, there's this guy, I can't think of his name, but he's like discountjuicers.com, and he does all these like versus challenges, and like this one I like for this, this one I like for this. So um, you can get a lot of information from people like that who, you know, this is their life to, to do these things, and, and he, he lives it too. He's a, he's a raw vegan guy, so. I've but, seen that one, and it's, it's like two ounces more, or yeah. an ounce more of juice from a huge amount of kale. So. Yeah. It, but, it's it, again, it's not huge, but but it, but it adds up. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does over a period of time. So, and the the other interesting thing is, and I don't want to belabor it, but like this, this one is actually it's a they call it a nutrition center because you can make like banana ice cream through. You, you feed a banana through, and then it has just a frozen banana. Frozen banana. It has a flat um, screen on it instead of the, the juicing screen, and so it like mashes it down. It's like soft serve ice cream almost, which is kind of cool. Um, We've never cold, done this actually. before. Yeah, it's very cold. It's frozen, in fact. Um, <laughs> you can run like um, dough through it if you want to make your own noodles. It has different um, ends on it, and then it just kind of pushes it through and, and forms the noodles. And it can. It says it can like grind coffee. It can make nut milks. It can do all kinds of stuff like that. We've looked through some of it, and, and a lot of it's easier. Like if you have something like the the Vitamix to make a, a nut butter or a nut milk, but it can do those things if if you want to take the time. So, so you, could a do, little more you could do black person. bean noodles? If, if you can find a recipe for the dough to put through, then yeah. The bag I bought it in just said that's all it I was, know, was black, black beans. Some water, right? <laughs> it I didn't mean, even say water. No, well, it seems simple enough that you should be able to do it. So. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, to, to be able to do something like that, have a little more versatility in it is, is nice. Again, we don't use it often. We use it mostly just for the juicy capability. But if you're ever interested in doing that. So, all right. Any other questions?